Good evening. The Scottish Government insists it's taking the necessary steps to prevent a potential spike in COVID cases caused by the COP26 climate summit. Some experts have raised concerns about the number of people gathering at the SEC campus, but the Health Secretary Hamza Yousaf says he's confident that any potential spread of the virus will be contained. Around 25,000 people are expected to arrive in Scotland ahead of the event, which starts next week. If Joe Biden were coming here next week on his own, it would be one of the biggest events that Glasgow had ever hosted and one of the most complex events that Glasgow had ever hosted. He's coming here and 139 of his, of his colleagues, other world leaders, are coming here too. So it's the biggest event that uh, Glasgow and Scotland and the UK will ever host with the biggest security overlay. Well, meanwhile, several major roads in Glasgow have closed as preparations get fully underway. The Clyde Arc, the Clydeside Expressway and parts of the M8 won't reopen until November the 15th. ScotRail staff are also expected to go on strike. Commuters are being urged to plan their journeys in advance. Businesses are being placed under enormous pressure by rising energy costs. That's the warning from the Scottish Chambers of Commerce, which are urging the UK government to introduce an energy cap for smaller firms ahead of the winter. Some businesses are warning their energy bills could increase by as much as 70%. I'm delighted to, to hear that the Chamber is, is pushing for this because I wholeheartedly 100% agree that it's just astronomical that the increases that we're having to face now as a, as a as a business and as a consumer, and it, it really needs to be capped and has to be uh, ring, ring fenced by the government before so many of us go out of business. Now, every year in Scotland, more than 3,000 people have a cardiac arrest away from hospital. Defibrillators can play a vital role in saving lives, and now there's a major push to get them onto a database, so emergency control rooms can pass directions onto potential first aiders. Here's our senior reporter, Gordon Cree. Precious moments for Bill and Emily, moments they nearly never had. A year ago, he was preparing to go out surfing here at St Andrew's East Sands when disaster struck. I have a vague recollection of putting my wetsuit on in the morning um, and seeing some of the waves, um, but I, I, don't, I don't remember anything from the day. I will always remember every detail of that day. Um, I was at work uh, and I got a call that the police needed to see me. Um, and in that moment, I knew that it must be Bill, and it must be surfing, and it must be bad. Um, and I remember waiting for the police, thinking this is the moment before everything changes forever. Bill had suffered a cardiac arrest. Fortunately, another surfer who'd had first aid training was able to start CPR, and life-saving equipment was nearby. Bill was unresponsive, he wasn't breathing, and he had no pulse. None of us thought he was going to make it. It was a long time to be without oxygen. Oxygen starved. It was, I think, 15 minutes. He didn't have a breath in him. And we knew there was an AED up on the wall. Bill was very fortunate that a defibrillator was so close to where he was. And his case only goes to highlight just how vital it is that we all know exactly where they are. An initiative called The Circuit means anyone calling 999 in these circumstances will be given directions of where to get the nearest one. It's a partnership between the Ambulance Service and the British Heart Foundation. Someone's survival rates drop by 10% every minute that goes by that they're not given CPR or not given access to a defibrillator. So it's a critical part of keeping someone alive out, out after a cardiac arrest. That's why we're so keen that people register their defibs with the circuit, which you can find details of online. And Bill is the living proof of why joining all this up matters so much. I feel great. Um, I, I feel like I've made a full recovery. I've been back out on the water and surfing. Um, and just in, enjoying life, um, really, you know, taking, taking advantage of, of every moment. Gordon Cree, STV News, St Andrews. OK, finally, to football and Rangers moved back to the top of the Scottish Premiership table after a 2-1 win against St Mirren. Stephen Gerrard's side fought back from a goal down with Alfredo Morelos grabbing the winner. It was his 100th goal for the club. And that's all we've got time for this evening. Philip has the forecast next, so don't go anywhere. Bye for now.